that moving current is pretty strong. <laughs> Whew, talk about your early morning calisthenics. All right, let's see if we can have a quick successful day, eh? Yeah, water level is still very, very low. Man, that's super low. All right, just need to find some blow-ups. Bait movement. Um, just target these oyster reefs right here um, where it kind of dropped into the mud. And just kind of, hopefully my luck will turn. But I, I love the water movement, man. That's, that's, that's really, really encouraging. Hmm, blow up right there. Okay, that's a good sign. Let's see if maybe there's a speckled trout. Yeah, you know, I'm getting thumped by bait. It's bait. Something disturbed that bait just now. It's moving right here too. Could be just one small like speckled trout just disturbing the bait. That's what I'm thinking. There we go. That's a nice dump. That feels like either flounder or speckled trout. Not sure yet. Oh yeah, that's a flounder. Okay, well, first fish, I'll take it. He ain't the world's biggest flounder, but I would take it nonetheless. I got you, bud, there we go. Yeah, I'll take it, buddy. All right, the lure just came out. I decided to go with the flats bug early in the morning, the one eight ounce. Yeah, he might be close to keeper. 14 three quarters. If anything, 15. Got a little parasite right there. Beautiful fish nonetheless. Once again, <laughs> he fell for that flats bug. Flats bug, man. Such a good lure here on this upper Texas coast. Let's let him go right there. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can repeat the results. What I do is kind of aim at a two feet depth in the mud right along this oyster. Not 100% right next to the oyster because I'll get caught. But yeah, just like that. There's oyster just extending all the way out from what you see on the video all the way into the water. So you have to be careful you can get stuck like I just did. Yeah, if you got a good combination of structure, which is your oyster, your oyster beds, along with moving water and bait, that's a good chance there's gonna be some fish around. Not all the time but it's better than not having any of that combination, right? <laughs> there we go. That's another fish. Nope, just joking, it's oyster fish. Felt like a flounder <laughs> for a second. <laughs> oh my gosh, he was chasing it. That had to have been a redfish, man. Dang it. Uh, that was my last lost opportunity right there. Spooked him. He was chasing him, man. Maybe, uh, many a fish a little bit slower. That was crazy. There we go. Nice. Another flounder, I think. Yep, another flounder. He's another potato chip. That's good that they're kind of just hanging out in this little channel, taking advantage of the bait movement and this high movement. I'll take it though. I will take it. You know, that big splash that I saw and I missed when he was chasing, could have been a flounder, man. Yeah, just to show you guys, look, look how dirty he is on the bottom. They're just laying down in the mud. You gotta bounce your lure in the mud and able to catch these guys. And the flats bug got it done again. Thank you, bud. Thank you, sure. Glad it's working out. Beautiful fish right there. He's probably about 12 inches. There we go. Is that another oyster fish? Please don't tell me another oyster fish. Dang it! <laughs> oh, me and my shenanigans. All right, 
Alright, we need to retie, man. That oyster really nicked up my line there. Some bait swimming right towards me to my right. I think that's what it is. There we go. I saw some movement there. That feels like a redfish. That feels like a redfish. Uh, swimming with the bait. Got him to bite. Hopefully he's a keeper. I can't really tell yet. He is pulling drag though, but that could be because of the current. Louisiana slot. <laughs> Pretty sure. Yeah, Louisiana slot for sure. Come here, buddy. We got you. Huh. Well, I mean, they're not giants, but I would take it nonetheless. Caught this guy sneaking by and the oyster with the uh, other fish. And I think he's probably about 19 inches. Let's just see. I mean, he is really close. No, he's not going to be slot for sure. But I mean, like upper dink, <laughs> if there's a such thing. Yeah, look at that. 19 inches on the dot. Asian eyes, man. We know math. But yeah, man, let's let him go. He fell for the... Uh, a curl tail, which I 100% appreciate you biting there, buddy. You really inhaled that one. That was really hooked in your mouth. Later, buddy. <laughs> there we go. That feels like a flounder. Oh, yeah, that's a nice flounder. Oh, nice. I think he's going to be a keeper flounder. He's pulling a little bit of drag. Yeah, he's going to be keeper. Oh, got you, buddy. We got you. Oh, yeah, he's a key. He is a key. You know, I didn't really have many options on where to go fish. Glad I chose this spot because it is paying off. Look at that keeper flounder, guys. He's probably about that's 16 inches, probably, on the flats bug. Once again, nice, big, healthy dude. Whoo, big fish. Big fish. This is probably one of my bigger flounders I've caught in a while, man. It's just been, I've been on a flounder drought. I don't know about you guys. I know some people have been posting on social media, but me, I'm going to be frank and uh, I'm going to be humble. I've been humbled by the flounder and it's been hard to catch him. I don't know why. I think maybe my retrieve has gotten a little faster. It's kind of like your golf swing, right? You, you've you been playing pretty good and then one minute little change just changes your whole dynamics and maybe that's what's going on. I don't know, but glad I got him. Fished him a little slow in the mud, taking advantage of the current. Once again, flats blug. Gold, black and gold. You get some. Link below. Flounder. You know, I think I have to keep him because I really... Like, when I was taking that lure out, it really shifted his mouth. Might have broke his jaw. I feel bad. I don't really want to key fish, but I don't want him to go to waste. So, yeah, we'll just keep him. That feels like a fish. <laughs> I'm like, is it a fish or is it an oyster fish? He just pulled a little bit. Another, another flounder. Another flatty. Another flat boy. But I'm just happy, man. They they are they are being active. Like I said, it's it's been a it's been a while since I've just caught you know flounder all day long, and that's look like it's what's happening right now. They're loving this flats bug, so I'm not going to change. You know, if it's not if it's not broken, don't fix it. Beautiful fish, all of them with parasites and mud on the bottom. Yeah. So what I'm really doing, it's really simple. There's no there's no scientific um, method. Or you'll need to prove a hypothesis or anything like that, all right? So basically, I am fishing structure. Right there is an apex. I'm fishing movement. The tide is coming out, obviously. Hopefully, you can see that on the video. And structure all over here. You got your oyster. You got some bait. I don't see a lot of bait, but I'm assuming the bait's underwater, right? The bait is in the water. And the flounder are just taking advantage of this movement, the mud, and the bait. And I'm just getting really lucky. I mean, I don't know how else to explain it. But yeah, you gotta get you gotta fish the bottom if you're trying to target flounder. You're gonna get caught many, many times like I am today. Maybe lose a few your lures, nick up your line. You know, that's just all part of fishing. Just something we have we all have to deal with if we're trying to target a certain species. Alright, got one fish in. My battery just died and it's a speckle trout. Nice one, right at the drop off. He might be a keeper, I think he might be a keep. Yeah, look at that boy. Woo! Oh yeah, this guy's a keeper, no doubt in my mind. Nice, speckled trout. Man, that technically is a Texas slam. Look at that. 
Oh, that's a nice keeper. It's probably about 15 and a half, 15 and three quarters, maybe 16 if I'm lucky. Once again, flats bug all day long. Flats bug, BFS fishing, that's what's out. It's a lot of fun catching these fish, taking advantage of the structure and current and bait. And it's turned out to be a pretty good day, even though the winds are really high. <laughs> I'd rather have flounder. And to be frank, I'd rather have redfish over speckled trout. I don't know why some people disagree on. Yeah, that wasn't released, but there she is. Water's really clear too. But yeah, I don't know. I, I, you guys, you guys prefer to eat flounder, uh, speckled trout, or redfish? For me, the pecking order is flounder first, redfish, then maybe speckled trout. I don't know. Leave in a comment. Let me know what you think. All right. So what I did is I kind of backtracked and kind of went back to actually where I kind of first started, um, so I can just take advantage of all the fish that are moving through here instead instead of working my way deeper into this marsh. Uh, like I said, if, if they're being pushed out by the tide, then I am going to just sit here and pick them off. If it slows down, then I might explore more in the back. But we had that heavy wind, and this marsh is actually protecting me pretty well. So I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah, let's see if we can catch a couple more keepers, man. Oh, wow. I just got nailed right here. All right, corner. <laughs> got them really hard. Oh, yeah, he's a keeper red. We got our Texas slam, baby. All on bug lures here. Oh, my gosh. Dang, that caught me off guard. I wasn't even recording. I apologize. Yeah, he is going to be a freaking monster. <laughs> On the BFS, man. Love the BFS. Uh, I wanted to try something different, so I got the new Ned Bug on. Just to see if we can catch a fish on it. And lo and behold, he slammed it, man. Like, oh my god, that was a massive freaking thump. <laughs> oh man, Texas Slam. I can't believe it, dude. I was not expecting this really i was just expecting a really kind of a slow day oh no oh man i talked too much i talked too much oh god he had to be a 24 25 incher dang <laughs> oh golly that sucks all right we got one on got one on another redfish despite the tide movement but still Slow day. I'll take it though. Look at that fish. What a Ned bug. <laughs> Lurking about three feet down. Thank you, buddy. There we go. Another one. Yeah, that's working. Just bank fishing here. Just fish targeting this three foot drop. It might be another red fish. Oh, it's a flounder. Take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I will take it, buddy. Come on in here. <laughs> we just need a speckled trout. We got a nursery slam. <laughs> uh, you know, he might be awfully close to a keeper. He's kind of looking. Oh, the, the lure just came out. Once again, on the uh, Ned bug there. He might be close. I don't know, man. I, you know, I, no, I don't think so. He's probably, before the regulations, probably it'd be a legal size. I'm thinking. Probably right at 14 if you can just stop there sir uh he got some nice fillets on him let's just see let's just see let's just see stay still there buddy yeah 14 look at that on the dot 14 he is not a keeper but still fun to catch there you go buddy get in the water there <laughs> you taking my lure again look he's right there you see him he's like right in the water right there that's funny I want to let everyone know that I actually built an Amazon store because a lot of people ask me where do I purchase this gear? What uh, lure are you using? What line are you using? Uh, what are the clothes that you're wearing? Etc. Etc. So I built a very comprehensive Amazon store. Uh, there's a direct link in the description box below. It lists everything. I, I pretty much break down, broke it down to different lists, different categories. So shop with your heart's desire. It's still Amazon. It's not an RX Angler like personal store or anything like that, but it's like a store that I, I built that I recommend the products from Amazon to buy. So you still have Prime, uh, you still get great returns. Uh, everything is Amazon through Amazon, but it's like the recommended shopping list that I recommend you buy for your fishing outdoor trips. So yeah, once again, direct link in the description box below. So if you ever have a question, um, you know, what am I using? What net am I using? Uh, where do you buy the pro cure etc etc everything's linked in the description box below so make sure you follow me too because i i constantly update it 
Uh, if I think of a, uh, an item that I think is very pertinent to fishing, that'll help you, you know, have a great day out in the water, I will listen to Amazon and it'll constantly be updating. So, and real fast guys, let me just show you what I was using today. Uh, Cause I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about that. Uh, this is the Daiwa Bijin, Gekka Bijin BFS reel from Digitaka. Verivus 1.2 gauge braided line. The new buoyancy from Old 18, the ultralight BFS rod. Um, was using a 12 pound Verivus leader right there and was using the flats bug. I was using the black and gold, but I ran out. So I have the blue crab on now, uh, but had a phenomenal day. Caught so many fish, um, two keepers, one keeper flounder, one keeper speckled trout. So I can't really complain. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna call it quits right now. I'm gonna head out because I have an early lunch date with my wife. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll catch you guys on the next one.